Today's video features Saint Maximus whose feast day is celebrated every August 13th. Little is known about the details of Maximus' life before entering the monastery, except that he was believed to be born from a noble family in Constantinople around the year 580. In his early life, Maximus served as a civil servant, and became first secretary to Byzantine Emperor Heraclius. Despite having a great favor of the emperor, Maximus left this life in the political sphere. He entered the monastic life contemplation in a monastery at Chrysopolis, which is opposite Constantinople. There, Maximus studied diverse schools of philosophy, the works of Aristotle, and numerous Platonic commentators on Aristotle and Plato like Plotinus, Porphyry, Iamblichus, and Proclus. Maximus was later elevated to the position of abbot of the monastery. When the Persians conquered Anatolia, Maximus was forced to flee to a monastery near Carthage. It was there that he continued his career as a theological and spiritual writer, and came under the tutelage of Saint Sophronius, and began studying the Christological writings of Gregory of Nazianzus and Pseudo-Dionysius the Areopagite. While Maximus was in Carthage, a controversy broke out regarding how to understand the divinity of Jesus that began following the First Council of Nicaea in 325, and were intensified following the Council of Chalcedon in 451. He worked with the newly elected Pope Martin I when the latter convened the Lateran Council of 649 at the Lateran Basilica in Rome, against the monothelist heresy. The 105 bishops present at the council condemned monotheism in the official acts of the synod, many believe may have been written by Maximus. Under the orders from Byzantine Emperor Constans II, who supported the monothelite doctrine, Pope Martin I and Maximus were arrested in 653. Pope Martin was condemned without a trial, but died before he could be sent to the imperial capital of Constantinople. Maximus stood behind the Diophilite position and was sent back into exile for four more years. During his trial, he was accused of aiding the Muslim conquests in Egypt and North Africa, which he rejected as slander. In 662, Maximus was placed on trial once more, and once again convicted of heresy. After the trial, Maximus was tortured in such a horrific way, his tongue cut out so he could no longer speak, and his right hand cut off so that he could no longer write. Later, Maximus was exiled to the Lazarkur, which is the modern-day Colchis region of Georgia and was cast in the fortress of Schemarum, near the modern town of Sageri. He died on 13 August 13, 662. The events of the trials of Maximus were told in a long letter by Anastasius Bibliothecarius where he told Maximus' sufferings on the journey to Colchis where he was imprisoned in different forts. He recalled that Maximus foresaw in a vision the day of his death, and that miraculous lights appeared nightly at his tomb. Saint Maximus died for orthodoxy and obedience to Rome. He has always been considered as one of the chief theological writers of the Greek Church, and has obtained the honorable title of the theologian, and sometimes called Maximus Confessor. He may be said to have completed and closed the series of patristic writings on the Incarnation, as they are summed up by St. John of Damascus. To harbor no envy, no anger, no resentment against an offender is still not to have charity for him. It is possible, without any charity, to avoid rendering evil for evil. But to render, spontaneously, good for evil, such belongs to a perfect spiritual love. For more information about every saints and their feast day, please like and subscribe to our channel, House of Prayers for Everyone.